Well, hello everybody, it's me, Mr. White. It's the Nowhere Emporium and it's reading with Mr. White. Now, things are getting so excited in our book. We're on to chapter 35 today, which is called The Challenge Core. And uh, I'm pretty certain you would have watched chapter 34. And if you haven't, you need to go back and watch it. In fact, if you haven't watched 34, you probably haven't watched all of them. So go back right to the start and watch them all. Chapter 34, whoa, it was crazy. It was called Bad Blood. And there was a duel, wasn't there, between the um, between Sharp and Silver from uh, a while back. Ellie and Daniel had watched it in the theatre. Um, and there was a battle, a duel to try and win the, the Book of Wonders. And in that battle, it was so dramatic, and in that battle, Vindictus Sharp was throwing daggers. He had three daggers that he was throwing at uh, Mr Silver. And as he threw the final dagger that was about to hit Mr Silver, he kind of summoned some energy and managed to deflect... The, the dagger away, only for the dagger to go flying into the heart of Michelle. <gasps> Michelle died. Obviously, Mr. Sharp was, um, Mr. Silver, sorry, was absolutely devastated. He loved Michelle, didn't he? Even though she stole that book off him. Um, but Vindictus Sharp, he didn't really seem that bothered that his daughter had just died. He blamed it all on um, Mr. Silver, poor Mr. Silver, and he said, the battle is not over. I will find you and I will kill you. Well, he has found him, hasn't he? Well, he's, he's in the Emporium now. Mr. Silver's gone missing. We know that. Uh, and we also know there's not many chapters left. So we're going to find out at the ending soon, aren't we? Chapter 35 is called The Challenge. Let's go. Daniel sat in stunned silence as the theatre lights came back up. He tried to wrap his head around what he'd seen, and once again in the back, the back room of his mind there was something jumping out at him, screaming to be noticed, an idea, a possibility. Beside him, Ellie's shoulders were bobbing up and down, tears streaming in her cheeks. Ellie? I can't believe it, Daniel. She died. All because of a book. You saw it. And Papa, well, he, he, he didn't mean to kill her. Of course he didn't, said Daniel. He shivered at the thought of Michelle lying dead on the floor. Mr Silver didn't even want to fight. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sharp's the monster. He is, isn't he? He's a real monster. A sneer of disgust crept over Ellie's face. He stepped right over her like she was a piece of dirt. She was my mum. She was his little girl. And, and if he can do that to her, then what would he do to us? Her wide... Excuse me. Her wide eyes were miniature versions of Mr Silver's. Daniel, that man's a monster. We've got to get rid of him and save Papa. Daniel? Daniel? Daniel's mind had been turning cogs and gears clicking into place. The idea in his head had caught fire. Ellie, he said, I realise you haven't been here very long. Sorry, I realise I haven't been here very long, but I reckon I know how Mr Silver works better than anyone. Something he said in the film we just watched it got me thinking. I can't be sure, but I might know where your papa is. She stared at him. You do? Where? I can't tell you yet. It's safer if I'm the only one who's in on it. You're going to have to trust me. I have an idea. I'm going to ask you to do something. It'll be dangerous, but I think it's the only chance we have. Ellie returned Daniel's stare, her jaw set. Anything. Good, said Daniel. First of all, I have to pay another wee visit to the Room of Secrets. <clears throat> Grey Manhattan rain pounded the sepia stained window of the Nowhere Emporium. Vindictus Sharp sat at Mr Silver's desk, throwing three knives, one after the other, at the stuffed polar bear. I feel sorry for that polar bear, do you? Back at the fountain where the boy had first snatched the book, Sharp had given chase, determined to find him and squeeze the air from his lungs. But the infernal Emporium had sent him running in circles. He had returned to the shop front, deciding instead to wait the boy out. A whisper from the red velvet curtain caught his attention and he spun to see the boy standing straight backed, defiant. <sighs> Daniel had never been as frightened of anything as he was of Sharp. Nothing, not even Spud Harper and his gang came close to the cold blue stare that was fixing him now. He made himself as tall as he could. I know where Mr. Silver's hiding, he said. Sharp was upon him in a heartbeat, pinning him like a rag doll against the wall. A silver blade pressed to his throat. He took the Book of Wonders from Daniel's pocket and tossed it on the desk. Please elaborate, he said. Daniel swallowed and tried to keep breathing. 
No, I won't. The knife dug into his skin, but not quite but not quite enough to draw blood. I could torture you, you know, Sharp said. I could make you tell me. Slowly, Daniel reached into his pocket. When he pulled his hand out, a tiny snow globe sat in his palm. Sharp looked at it. Am I supposed to know what that is? It's a secret, said Daniel. It's a secret you want to know. It's where you can find Mr Silver. I figured it out. Sharp snatched the secret from his hand. Daniel relaxed a little as the knife was withdrawn from his throat. Sharp shook the secret and held it to its ear. It won't work, Daniel went on. That's the whole idea of a secret, isn't it? I don't want you to know where Silver is. And as long as the secret is in that globe, you can't force it out of me. Electric blue eyes flickered from the secret to Daniel. Why did you come? Daniel shrugged. To challenge you. Excuse me? I know how it works. I know that if I challenge you, you either accept or you give up. So I challenge you. I'll write a wonder into the book just for you. Inside it will be your challenge and you write one for me. We'll go in at the same time and whoever comes out first is the winner. Sharp smiled. If I win, he asked. Daniel pointed to the secret. If you win, I'll help you find Mr Silver. I know you need him to die for the book to be yours, but he's not going to come out to play. You'll have to wait till the Emporium collapses on top of him, till he's totally dead. And that could take a long time. This way, if you win, you can kill him and the book will be yours. Sharp nodded agreeably. And if I win, continued Daniel, you leave us alone and you don't ever come back. He held out a hand. Agreed? Well, he's brave, isn't he? Sharp scratched the, the silver stubble on his chin. Then his hand swallowed the boys and an electric ripple passed through the room. Agreed. Daniel walked to the desk, trying to look more confident than he felt. As he picked up one of Silver's fountain pens, his mind began to fill with doubts. Would the Emporium support the creation of two new wonders? Was his idea really as good as he first thought? What sort of challenge would Sharp think up for him? What if he lost? He was gambling an awful lot on the belief that he was good enough to beat this man, that the Emporium would help him. He opened the book to an empty page. I'll link the doors so they should appear together. Right away, Daniel Holmes, said Sharp. Right away. Daniel gripped the pen tight so that his hand wouldn't shake. Then he pressed the nib to the page and the ink began to flow. Oh, I wonder what he's going to I can't, Can you believe that? He's just challenged um, Vindictus Sharp. He is very, very brave. Uh, OK, oh, I can't believe it. There's two chapters left. The next chapter is called, oh, obviously, Daniel versus Vindictus. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Right, you're going to have to join me next time, aren't you? I can't do it now. You make sure you join me for the next video. Wow, see you later.